Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to look at how uh, PSIM SimCoder Engine, uh, combined with the targets, generates interrupt routines for your uh, DSP projects. In this uh, simple simulation, so far, all we want is a uh, 100 kHz duty cycle PWM to be generated, and let's generate the code and see how that is handled. Okay, so let's close that over. So if we look at down at the bottom here, there's a, a main function, there's an initialization, and then there's an interrupt that's set up. And we can see that there's one interrupt routine right here called task, and this is the PWM rate that's getting set here. So this task is getting called uh, with a 100 kHz uh, rate. Okay, so now let's see what happens uh, when we add in additional interrupt routines. So I'll enable this bottom circuit and we'll disable these other loops to start with. And now we'll add in a 20 kHz uh, interrupt routine or uh, sampling frequency with this one here. So let's go ahead and generate the code again. And now we can see that a second subroutine has been generated. Um, it, well, sorry, a second interrupt routine has been generated here. So we have our first interrupt routine here, which is being called at 100 kHz. And then we have a second interrupt routine that's being called down here. Uh, this is handling our, our 20 kHz function. Uh, and we can see uh, there's a, a couple elements in here called delay 20k. Uh, and if we go down to the bottom again, we can see how those uh, timers are getting set up again for the interrupt routines. Okay, so let's add in a third uh, sampling rate, in this case, one kilohertz. And let's see how that's handled by, by the uh, generation engine now. So we'll go back to simulate and hit generate code. And now we see that there's three interrupt routines that have been called uh, or generated. And we see our first one still is there, which will run at 100 kHz. We have our 20 kHz routine here. And then we have our third routine here, which is still an interrupt routine and it is running at 1 kHz. And if we come down to the initialization zone, we can see we have two extra timers that have been initialized along with the PWM timer still up here. So these are gonna be uh, executing uh, at once their timers get called. And we can see at the end of each interrupt routine, a, an exit timer, uh, PWM timer is interrupter is set. Okay, now what happens if we add in a third? Sampling rate, this time slower at 500 hertz. Let's generate the code for this one now. Generate code, and we can see that uh, we've got our first PLM interrupt, our second 20 kHz interrupt, our third 1 kHz interrupt, and now this task 3 is actually being defined as a function. So that's because we've run out of, of timers on this chip. So uh, this one is, is running as expected, and we can see down at the bottom here, Task 3 is now inside of, of a function. And if we go all the way to the bottom, we can see that uh, in main, what was previously just a simple uh, for loop that was infinite, there is now a timer associated in here which calls our function um, every 500 hertz. So this, uh, this, this is sort of more of a, of a software interrupt that's calling this task down here. Okay, so to, just to show you again the difference, if I disable this one, which was running at 500 hertz, if I generate the code, we can see down in this for loop that there was nothing there. And then with, with this one, now that we've run out of interrupt routines, if I regenerate the code again, we can see that it's now being called inside of that for loop while the uh, in, in, in function main. Okay, so let's have a look at the code as it executes. Um, I've already imported the project and we can see it's all the same stuff here uh, with the same timestamp as the original. So uh, three o'clock or almost four o'clock now. And uh, we've got our interrupt routine running down here. So let's uh, debug this project and have a look at uh, some of the values in the, in the watch window. Okay, so the code is running now, and I've set up a breakpoint here inside of the uh, slowest task, so task three. Uh, we've got a breakpoint inside it down at the bottom here. 
um, which is on this uh, this assignment here. And I've set up some watch windows, uh, watch expressions in CCS. And what we should be seeing is we should see uh, the 500 value increment once, and then we should see the 1K value increment twice, and then we should see the uh, 20K value increment uh, uh, 40 times over for each time that this guy increments. So uh, let's run this through again, and it'll execute all those interrupt routines, and then we'll uh, uh, it'll halt again once it goes back inside of the 500 hertz um, function call. Okay, so let's go once more through, and we saw that this one incremented uh, to 66, this one went plus 2, and this one is plus 40. So we should all go through a couple times, and you should see 20, 40, 80, and then the middle one is 48, 49, 50. Well, 500 is just going one at a time. Okay, so that's how all the interproteins get built inside of PSIM. Uh, you get a timer associated to the PLEMs, you, and then you get two additional timers, and then if you have... If you have uh, routines that run slower than that or additional routines, those get assigned to uh, software uh, interrupts so that will get called inside of this for loop down here. So that's how uh, PSIM handles all that. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, thanks again for watching and please check again for more videos.